as far as the Rest in Peace 20th anniversary, you're going to do the whole album? Yes, correct. Is it, are you going to do it in order? Yes. Cool. <laughs> um, and then, <laughs> is, is that what you've been doing there, just playing the, what about other songs, what about Endgame? And yeah, well, we're playing uh, Head Crusher, of course, mm -hmm. um, and we've talked about adding other, uh, other songs off of Endgame, but um, right now we're sticking with Head Crusher, and then, you know, we kind of start the set off with a, a few songs that, they're actually really awesome songs, but uh, we started off so that, you know, we make sure that the uh, front of house, uh, you know, the engineer, the sound engineer, is he's got everything dialed in, the sound is right, and uh, our monitor guy has got everything dialed in, our techs have everything dialed in. Because it would be, you know, it would suck if a fan paid money, you know, to come and see this 20th anniversary of, of Rest in Peace. And then the first three songs of that, you know, you basically can only hear, you know, the bass, or you can only hear the drums, or whatever, you know, whatever the, the, the case may be. So. So we want to make sure we're dialed in before we go into that. So we started with three songs, then we we run the entire album, mm -hmm. and then we end it with uh, three or four songs and on the you, back end. Do you change those up show to show, or are they always the same? Um, well, they were the same, but we changed them recently um, because we thought we found a better set of songs that worked around Rest in Peace. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Oh, my question, though, was going to be, uh, as far as the crowd reaction to songs on Rust in Peace, which ones are they blowing up most about? Uh, well, I think they uh, definitely still Holy Wars, you know, even though we play it a lot, I think, that, you know, that will just be the never-ending mm -hmm. song. And uh, I think the diehards love Five Magics mm -hmm. because that's so rare. Um, let me see. I think a lot of people really like Lucretia as well um, because it's just got a good groove and a good vocal melody as well. Mm -hmm. um, I mean... Well, yeah, that's another really good one, too. He's going to blow up at that one. <laughs> right. All right. <laughs> Hopefully you're not the only one. No, yeah. I won't be. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to gauge, to tell you the truth. In a way, um, because we use in-air monitors, mm -hmm. you know, it's like it, I, it puts you in your own little box, yeah. in a way, which, which really kind of sucks because you're not as connected with the fans. But um, so you, you can't always tell how much people are appreciating different things because I've come off stage before and I've gone, man, you know, that really didn't go over that well. And, and you know, like my tech will be, be like, what are you talking about? They were over the top. They were insane. And, yeah. and sometimes it can, it can depend on just whether or not they have the audience mics turned up in our ears or not. So that you know, because we actually have mics that face the audience, so we can get a little bit of that yeah, vibe yeah. from it. Yeah, because you feed off of it too, as a musician. Absolutely. When you're on stage, I mean, it's I like if everybody's out there knitting. You're... Yeah, I couldn't survive if if the audience wasn't there. Like, yeah. um, it would be too, way too nerve wracking. They they help me forget that it, it, you know, that I'm up there performing, and they they may just make me think that oh, this is a good time, you know. Yeah. What about when you're performing as a classical musician? It's all quiet that's very and stressful for me. Yeah. 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 I, I can imagine. Yeah.